Good evening. Welcome, everyone. My name is Holly. I am a psychic medium, and I am from Louisville, Kentucky. I am beyond honored to be here with you guys and to get to share my Thursday evenings with you all. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> tonight, we're just going to do a little introduction. I'm going to take a caller later, which is my favorite part of what I do, getting to talk to you guys and help you all along. So it's going to be an interesting ride, I'll tell you that. We, we have a lot of fun. Um, I have a group on Facebook, and... We just, we don't know what we're going to do every day. Something new comes through and we just do it. So I'm just going to begin by sharing a little bit about my backstory, what landed me right here in this place today. I am, um, I'm going to tell my age, I'm 45, born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky. For those of you who are not familiar, Kentucky, Louisville is home of the Kentucky Derby. We're known for fast horses, beautiful women, and bourbon. So that's our big, big ride, you know, ticket to fame. I um, am the oldest of five siblings. I have four children myself. So my journey has not always been such an exciting, happy one. Like right now where I am, it is filled with so much joy and gratitude and love. Um, but it's taken me a really long time to get to this place. Growing up, I always felt different. I never fit in. I couldn't understand why I wasn't accepted. Um, you know, I had bouts of the intuition and foresee things and just, I didn't understand what's happening. Um, I picked up everybody's feelings and emotions and I carried them, but I thought it was me. I never understood it. So fast forward through life, I uh, got married, became a hairdresser, which was my passion in life. Did hair for 22 years until last year, July, 2020. Um, my career came to an end because of my arm. So whatever, everything happens for us, not to us. And you're hearing me say that a lot. So get used to that part as well. Um, along the journey, obviously, you know, life is full of ups and downs and we kind of establish our pattern early on and we carry with us um, the things that we learned at a young age. So I talked about being, you know, feeling different and not feeling like I was accepted and not feeling like I fit in. Um, I struggled my whole life with my work, with my value. I never understood why why, what was wrong with me? Why was I not worthy? Um, that of course cost me many horrific relationships. Um, I was always seeking love, seeking love from others because I didn't love myself, but I didn't understand that. That came with time. As I continued through life, fulfilling, you know, just going through life, really, I'm just going through the motions. I'm just living day to day. I'm trying to raise four kids. I was divorced, so I've got these four babies. They're, you know, a handful. I had four under the age of five. I had a set of twins, my first. So it was um, it was busy. But I, I think the important part, we'll get to that. Like, I um, was in a relationship, my previous one, for six years. And during that relationship, my intuition started to become very strong. And I started to sense things. Um, I would foresee things but I didn't actually see it. I just felt it. Um, um, things at work, being a hairdresser, you know, I have people in my chair all day long. It was getting harder and harder every day. Um, I got to the point where I wanted to go get put on medication. I was like, what is wrong with me? I would get home from work. I'd sit in my driveway for 45 minutes or until a child, one of the kids saw me and then I'd have to go inside because I just couldn't. And all along, I thought it was me. Um, during that previous relationship, I actually started to see things. But you guys, this is the thing too, and I think that we aren't taught and the spiritual world isn't spoken on often. And it's frowned upon by many people. And it's really unfortunate because it truly is a gift from God. And, and I always set that tone for people like God, that's my God, but it's universe, source, spirit, whomever you call on, that's okay. I call on God. Um, I had a lot of time with him trying to understand what the heck is going on? Why can't I do this? Started going to church, you know, got baptized and my heart reflected love because they say that'll heal you and you'll find love. But I didn't love myself. I still couldn't love myself. Um, couldn't understand it. So, you know, I'm going through this journey, trying to live life, trying to raise these kids, not understanding what the heck is going on around me. I'm starting to see visions. And, you know, growing up, because it's not talked about. I always thought that if you were a psychic medium, like you could just walk up to someone in the store, like Teresa Caputo, she walks up to someone in the store, she's like, hey, by the way, I didn't understand any of that because nobody talks about it. Nobody wants to share 
the truth behind this amazing gift because it's what it is it's a gift and it's a gift to be used for good so remember that okay um 2020 happened you know the world went to craziness but i found a peace i know crazy right two weeks into being off work i had never been so free i was like what i get it so that's when the realization is i'm an empath i'm picking up everybody's emotions everybody's feelings Go through it, you know, after I lost my hair career, then July 2020, um, life went, it was already kind of teeter, and it just like plummet. I had nothing. My career was gone. I had no identity. And imagine standing in that space where you've got all these confusing things going on. We're not really sure what's, are you crazy or what? What is this that's really happening within you? Um, and it finally took the end of my relationship in May of 2021, and myself finally recognizing and acknowledging that there had to be more done. So the first thing I did was I sought out a mentor. And my mentor, Gina Scarpino, she is a psychic medium here in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, I went to her initially because I want to be a life coach, because my entire life, all I've ever wanted to do is help people. I've always wanted to help people. Um, I want to help people find their why. And that's still my mission. I want to help you find your why. So I went to her to do mentoring, to do life coaching, because that's what I wanted to do. And I knew that um, mixed with going to my mentor, couple therapist, starting breath work, all of a sudden, all these things started to become of light and reveal themselves to me. I guess it was June. Gina's like, you ready to start working on your gift? And we dove right in. And, you know, the one thing every single morning when I talk to God, I Ask him, please let me be as humble today, 20, 30, 50 years from now, as I was that first day. Because you all, that realization, I, it still blows my mind. It still is hard for me to understand because for so long, I had no value. I had no worth. So why was I valuable enough to be given a gift this beautiful? You know, I tell people, and, and I don't take this lightly, and I don't think I'm superior, but I, I'm like, I'm on this team doing work here on earth to help people, to help people learn that we matter, we're important, you're worthy, you're loved, and you are love. That's my mission. And I'm lucky enough at this point to be able to not only use my gift to help people, but I also get to continue to work on my healing um, I had a session the other day and I had my sitter ask me, is all that healing stuff real? Do people really love themselves? That's a question I've never gotten because you hear your whole life. That's what it's about. Because once you love yourself, everything around you changes. Yeah, it's true. It's hard work, guys. It is hard work. And in our group that we do, you know, we talk about that. Healing is not fun. It stinks. Healing is hard. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do, but it's the most beautiful, most gratifying thing you're ever going to do as well. I look back and I think, gosh, why couldn't I have done this all these years ago? Because there's so much freedom. There's so much peace. But I also understand it happens when it's supposed to. Everything does. So had things not played out the way they did, we wouldn't be sitting here. So I hold a space of gratitude as well. And again, like I said, you guys are going to hear me a lot say everything happens for us, not to us. And I know that sometimes sitting with that is a hard statement to understand. Um, and I respect that. But what I also know is had my life path not been what it was, because he was broken before my relationship, that last one. Hence, that's why I was in the relationship. Because I didn't value myself. I didn't love who I was. So I needed love from somebody who would give it to me. So had I not been in that last relationship, I would not have come on this journey here. Being in that relationship opened a part of who I am. A part of that that always lived within me. So I hold gratitude and I will always have gratitude and I hold the space. Everything happens 
for you, not to you. And I know it happened for me, not to me. So we're going to have fun. Um, I get a little wild, a little crazy sometimes, but that's okay. That's part of my personality. But I just want people to always know the space that I hold is a safe, loving space. And that's intentional because we all have to start somewhere. And I feel it's important for me to be able to share with you all the things that I didn't have to get to the space. So I just am like beyond excited, so happy to be here with you all to share this journey. Um, you know, this being a psychic medium, it's about healing and it's about bringing peace to others that are suffering, that are hurting. Um, and I get to do that. But I also know it doesn't end there. And we'll dive more into that as we move along in the weeks to come. Um, but that's why I started my group that I did in, on Facebook, because the readings I was giving, it's amazing. And I can give you the tools in that reading to work on the things within. But I always felt like we were leaving it unfinished. So my mission, my goal, my why I'm here is just to help everyone, help you find your why. You know, I love the saying, come as you are, but don't stay there. Come as you are, but don't stay there. You are going to get used to all my sayings, and I will let you all know this too. Um, you know, there's automatic writing. We'll talk about that later. I call it free writing. I kind of make names up for things that already have names. But, you know, so I'm like, let's just simplify it. We don't need all these big old technical names. What feels good to you? Let's just go with that. So get used to that. Don't be surprised if you're like, what is she talking about? And I'll always explain it. So I told, uh, I told them at first, I'm a gabber. I talk a lot. I love to talk. So I have to watch myself too and stay on task. And I've got a great team helping me do that. So again, I just want to thank you all. I am so excited to be here and I cannot wait for the journey and just to see where this takes us. So um, I think we have our first caller. Let me see. Y'all and be patient with me because this is awesome. Danielle. Okay. Danielle. Yes. Oh. Hi, Danielle. How are you? Good. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank you. I am Holly. It's so good to speak with you tonight. Yeah, I know. I was so excited to receive your call. <laughs> Yay. And just think too. For the rest of your life, you're always going to be the very first caller I ever took on my very first on-air show with Air Psychic Radio. How oh cool my, is that? Oh, my goodness. That's fantastic. <laughs> yes. I'll make it a good one for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and just dive right in, Danielle. So is there something that is on your heart that you're wanting to really look into today? Um, as everybody knows, the last two years of all around the world has been really, really such a negative headspace um, of because of Corona, and I my life has just been a roller coaster ride. Um, and yeah, I'm just I just would love some guidance around anything really. Um, I've, my mental health deteriorated dramatically. Um, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I don't know, I just anything in, in general, um, yeah. Okay, okay. You know, when, when you were talking, um, the first thing I, ca I heard was flipped upside down. Your entire world was flipped upside down. Um, I, I feel like what Spirit's saying, there's, there's this need for almost the structure, and it's not that you thrive on the structure, but it's just the knowing Life is, you know what's going to happen. Um, the unexpected doesn't go well. Um, and I think with what did happen with 2020, um, it became very unexpected. And there was no consistency. And tomorrow, you know, we, we, we didn't know what tomorrow was going to bring. Um, and that's very scary when people want to be in that place of having that comfort. So I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to pull a couple of cards for you and just kind of see what Spirit says. Um I feel like one thing I'm hearing too, um, a lot of your relationships have changed since 2020. I feel like there's there's a couple in particular that 
um, have really taken a toll on it. And I feel like they, there's almost, you're almost blaming yourself for that. Like that, because you feel like you're in this place, the sadness that has come over you, um, that it's kind of changed things um, with those friendships. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and even like all of this year, it's just, I'm not sure what, what was in America, but in Australia, especially in Victoria, it, we, we were in lockdown for like six months. Um, you know, job loss, to move house. Um, um, yeah, it was just... I don't need to interrupt you, but I'm getting, I want to ask you this because I'm getting this. Do you write, do you do poetry? Um, because I'm seeing, and it's a little, it's like my notebook, just a little journal size notebook for the caller. So people on the radio, you can't see it, but just a little journal is what I'm seeing and you with a pen. And I feel it's almost like poetic. I don't even know if intentionally you're poetic if you write, but that's what I'm seeing. Have you done any writing during this time alone? More just like journaling or... Um, when I'm in a really bad space, I try and write positive things in, in a book, what I'm grateful for, um, and I'm not consistent with it. Um, it's hard to get stuff all out of my mind because my mind's full. That kind of okay. deal. So I've always loved poetry, love writing. Okay, okay. Um, but I'm hearing that's your healing, that's your salvation, and you don't have to do it every day. So don't be hard on yourself. Um, do it when you can. But... I'm also being told you need to go back and read your entries. Have you done that lately? Because Spirit's saying you need to go back and start reading entries again. Because there's some messages for yourself in there that's going to kind of help you a little bit. But it's not going to help you a little bit. It's going to help you a lot. You need to go back and reflect. And, you know, I tell everybody, too, there are no coincidences in life, period. Um, and this is, again, like, we write things when we're in places and spaces, and they're showing things. And they're showing just like really gray and rainy and like that. For me, my symbolism just, you know, it was it was rough. And you've been in places that was far worse than where you are right now. Um, go back and look at those entries. Go yeah, back and look I at those. Really? <laughs> yeah. There's going to be peace within there. Oh, my gosh. I love this. Like, this is, okay, for the callers, or for the callers, you're my caller, for the people on the radio that can't see my card. But this is why I get, this is what I mean when I said I want to always be as humble as I was the first day, 20 years from now, I get so excited because spirit's so amazing. So I pulled a card from my Oracle, um, the Wisdom of the Oracle deck, and it literally, the card says mending. And Danielle, I mean, that does not explain the situation any better than that. We couldn't have done that on our own, obviously. But I just see, you know, mm. did you say ending? No, give me one second. Right. I'm just shot. No, it's okay. Cause I get downloads and I write them cause they come sometimes pretty quick for me. Um, you know, mending M E N D I N G mending. mending. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what it is, is just working through that. What spirit's showing is that journal, you know, and I don't feel like there's a lot written in that journal is what they're showing, but what's been written in there is so imperative. It's, important and it's going to be part of your healing um and also the one thing too um they keep saying it's kind of like too at this point this you've your mindset it has been just so much gloom and doom that that has become your normal so that's kind of what you've settled yeah. into and you've it so this is where you're going to have to do yeah. some hard work you're going to have to yeah. change that mindset and i know it's work and it's hard um affirmations you know, write daily five affirmations and you're not going to believe them at first right now. And that's okay. But every day you write those affirmations, put them on a post-it note, put them around your house, get lipstick and write it on your bathroom mirror. Read those affirmations to yourself because you're going to believe them one day, but you have to do yeah. the work to get there. And you don't want to be where you are. Yeah. You're, you're ready. Absolutely I think, not. yeah, I, I feel like there was a period where, you know, there was true sadness and despair but then it almost became your crutch does that make sense yeah 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 so you know what what spirit's showing me is the mending and it's time and it's, yeah by may you know they're showing me the number five so of course i always do add them up five months or the fifth month which is may i do see a lot of changes coming in for you 
Um, but I'm also going to let you know is they're showing me you have to put that work in for the changes to come. And there's sunshine. Like I see this beautiful, they're showing me this like cartoon sunshine. This it's huge with this huge race coming out of it and a rainbow that is surrounding it. Your glory, your peace is coming. You just have to kind of accept and know that you've got some work to do and that's okay. And it's going to be a little hard, but finding that acceptance and allowing yourself some grace. And I think that's what I keep hearing is that you're being a little hard on yourself. You know, this wasn't a normal circumstance. (laughs) Yeah, this, you didn't choose that. that. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So be gentle. And, and that's why, again, they say, go back, read the journals. And again, which I can show the rear, I forgot, I can show you all at the TV, um, the mending card. And if anybody goes back and watches, they'll be able to see it. But, you know, that just, that speaks so much. And then I went ahead and pulled this guy here, the observer. And again, it just aligns and resonates with, just pay attention. Look at the things that you have written. You know, Spirit's saying like, you, you tend to, like, you, you set this plan. It's like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to get my notebook out, my book. I'm going to journal. I'm really going to have a good attitude. I'm going to be positive. I'm going to see the p- good. And then you get up and you're like, mm, I'll do that tomorrow. And then you get upset with yourself because you're like, I'm not doing this. I'm not, you know, I'm not, because you, even in the beginning when you said like, well, it wasn't consistent. That's okay. The fact that you do it, even if it's once a week. Um, don't be so hard on yourself. Don't be so hard. Okay. Um, did you, did your, so did you, something happen with your, um, your occupation, a major shift once COVID happened? Look, what do you mean? I don't know. I just feel um, something like they're showing me that there was a change. I don't know if you're feeling detached from if you're, if you were your position, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I lost my job about three times, three different times over the last two years during Corona, and I just felt because of my mental, because of my mental state and everything that was going on, I kind of felt detached from my job, detached from myself. Um, like my heart got broken a lot last year, um, which really affected me, and I felt like. I just felt empty inside, like um, there was no passion anymore, but I still love the job that I do. Um, I just feel, yeah, maybe it is, I think it is me because I've been through a lot the last few years and it's kind of, I just feel numb now. Um, and I'd love to get that passion back. Um, I've just been hurt by a lot of people. Um, and... you um and while you were talking i was jotting things down just coming through you know the big and for you to end that statement with do i stay here in this career or do i change the first thing i had written down is find your why find your why so you need to figure out what it is that that desire that's burning within yourself um and it's all going to begin with this healing as soon as you start to really honor yourself love yourself and be able to accept the things that have happened, that's when doors are going to start opening for you. And they're literally showing me wisdom and doors opening. And I feel like it's going to be the next 14 months. So keep your, keep your heart open, keep a smile on your face, read those journals, keep writing and don't be hard on yourself. Give yourself grace. Thank you so much, Danielle. I am so honored to get to speak with you tonight and I hope that that helps, but no, you're going to be okay. You just got to put a little work in. I give it 14 months and I see new, new, Possibilities opening, but you're going to be creating those new careers and opportunities for you moving forward. I hope so. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely want <Yes>. that. <laughs> Thank you it's so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Danielle. You have a beautiful night. Thank you. You too. Bye. 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 Oh, my goodness, you guys. Thank you all so much. This is amazing. And 
like I said, I love what I do. I love getting to be a part of every single person's life. I love how spirit tells us exactly what we need to hear, not what we want to hear always, but what we need to hear. So again, it's an honor to be here. I will be here next every Thursday night at 9.30 p.m. We're going to do so many fun things. Make sure you get a journal. Always have your journal and pen when you're on Thursday nights at 930 with me because we always have little things we get to write. So I'm here for you guys. Finding our why. And just remember, come as you are, but don't stay there. Honor yourself. Feel joy. Feel gratitude. And most importantly, find that love within because it's all within yourself and that's what matters. So I can't wait for all the weeks to come and the adventures we're about to go on. And I will tell you, spirit leads the show. So who knows what we're going to do and what road they're going to take us down over the months here together. So thank you guys so much. It was a beautiful night and I can't wait to next week. I'll see you then. Bye.